I just had a whole speech and I got to start over because I wasn't live. So, <laughs> you know, trial and error. But uh, thank God that we are here. Uh, let's, let's pray. Let's start with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for allowing us to be here one more time to bring uh, your word, to encourage people, to uh, bless people, Lord Father. That every word that come out of my mouth, Lord Father, be uh, come that come from heaven, Lord Father, that touch people's life, Father. You know their need. You know everybody, everyone's need, Lord Father. And right now, uh, we put our heart in check, Lord Father, and check our heart, Lord. Check where we stand, Lord Father, with you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, because you are merciful, God, Lord Father. And in the midst of chaos. You are there, Lord. In the midst of everything that is going on in this world, Lord Father, you still here and you still ministering to our life. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch people's life, whatever they are, Lord Father, and that this word encourage them to keep going, to keep on fighting, and to keep uh, seeking you, Lord Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hello, everyone. Hello. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, well, no echo? No echo? Let me know if you hear any echo. Amen. <laughs> oh, I want to talk to you about how is your heart? How is your heart today? Um, how, um, I want to talk on Psalms 51.10, and it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit in me. And the reason I want to talk to you about this verse today is because many people want to spend uh, their money in physical appearance. And look, I, I, I'm all good. I am down to look good in your appearance and to uh, present yourself uh, looking good. But when you waste all your money and looking and trying to look good, but your heart is messed up and your heart is broken, then we have to uh, review ourselves. We have to look at ourselves and see what is it that we're doing, home, or we're doing wrong. Because we can look good on the outside, but if our inside, if our heart is broken, is damaged, then we're not doing nothing good. However, I think that we need to understand that the Lord wants your heart to be good and in good shape. It's a different view how God sees us than how we see us. And we might think that we are good and we might think that we're standing right in the eyes of God, but how we have a check, how we check ourselves. And when Samuel was looking for someone to replace Saul to be a king of Israel, God told Samuel, do not, do not look at his appearance. Do not look at, his, at how big or how strong he looks or how tall or how high or how small. Don't look at that. Look at his heart. Because God knew that David had a good heart. God knew that David had a pure heart and a heart uh, uh, for him. And men conform to his heart. And we, we can stand. Uh, we have to understand this. We don't see what God sees. And so many times, God, yes, God gave us revelation. God gave us, God showed us uh, the things that we need to see. But he, he, remember, he's in the throne and he sees from the top down. And he can see everything that goes on around us. But we, not, we don't have that view, that, that view that we can see everything. And... Uh, we don't have that scope that he have. He understand everything. He he see us. He he. We're not even close to understand everything that God wants to do in our life. Everything that God wants to show us. Everything that God wants to uh, minister in our heart. The Bible teaches that our heart is the central organ that has control over everything that we do. And if you look at it, it determines the way you think. It determines the way you speak. Because what comes out of your mouth is because it's in your heart. And it determines everything that we say and within. And, 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 and the thing is, with our thoughts, it, it can go crazy. But it's because we allow something to get into our heart. And when we hurt the root 
of our pain is in our heart. So I want us today to check our heart, to check where are we standing and where is our heart. David's heart was right. And he wasn't built. He was just a little shepherd, but he was a mighty warrior. And he was a, a valiant person, a person that he will fight. He was a good leader. He was inspired, an inspired leader. And he was a gifted uh, leader man, in many areas because he, he used to play the harp, but he used to uh, take care of the sheep. And he used to do so many things. <laughs> excuse, you know, excuse my English. <laughs> But uh, in many areas, he was very gifted, and he had a heart that was right in, in the eyes of God. But before we get to that, I want to I wanna talk about what things can destroy your heart, because there's so many things that can break your heart. There's so many things that can make your heart uh, fall into a place where you don't know how to get out. You don't know uh, how to fix things, and our heart is in a... a and our body, and our body right now, our hearts, it's in a position that it can be protected from harm. It's in a position, our heart, it's in a position where it can be protected if we get hit, if we get uh, some type of uh, something, it can be protected. But in the spiritual, we don't have that protection. In the spiritual, we have to be the one protecting our heart. We have to be the one, be careful with uh, the forces that comes against us. Uh, and... It, it can be jeopard, uh, it can jeopardize your integrity when your heart is not right. And that is why in Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of your life. This is Proverbs 4.23 again. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of your life. Without your heart, there is no life, obviously. But in the spiritual, if you don't guard your heart from the things of darkness from the things that will uh, mess you up, it will break your heart. It will damage your heart. And one thing uh, that I want to touch is being successful. And look, I'm 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 down to be successful, and it, it's something good. And God wants everybody to be successful. God wants everybody to have uh, some type of accomplishment in their life. But when we have success and we start saying, look at what I did. Look at what I have done. Uh, this, is, this was all me. Uh, this, I did this. And, you know, that's what Saul did. They, Saul was like, you know, I did this. I built this. And not realizing that you causing God to look at you and, and, this, and discard you. And, and you start build, uh, being selfish. You stop being selfish, and selfishness will shrink your heart. Selfishness will will think that it's all about me, myself, and I. And you know what? I'm talking for a place of experience. This is one of the problems in my life that I had that I was just thinking about myself, what was best for me, what was convenience for me, and not knowing that I was doing more damage to myself but at the same time, I was doing damage to other people's, to other people's life. And I had to uh, uh, come to uh, come to Jesus, like we said, and realize that what I was doing was wrong. That I was what I was doing, I was damaging myself, but I was damaging other people's life, other other people's heart. Because when you selfish, and when you think only about you, me, myself, and I, you start hurting yourself, and you start hurting other people. And uh, that's, we got to be careful. we supposed to uh, help each other, encourage each other, and not be relented, rel relented to, uh, to not do things for others. Uh, we have to be able to open our heart to help others. Uh, because inactivity will bring, uh, will drive you to be lazy, a lazy person. Uh, you don't want uh, to serve, or you don't want to uh, love. You don't want to function with the capacity that God gave you. And you don't want to function in the gifting that, ha that God has given you. And we start saying, oh, well, it's all about me. It's all about me, myself, and I. So why should I uh, help others? Why? I don't want to do it. I just want to be lazy. I just want to go in and out, go about my business, and not um, 
consider other people. And when you don't take other people in consideration, you start uh, uh, committing sin. And sin will harm your, your heart. Sin uh, will make you do things that at first you have that conscious of, man, I'm doing wrong, you know. I, but then, you know, that saying when they say when you start repeating something and when you start doing something over and over, you get comfortable. It becomes easy for you. And when we start, it's like smoking. When you start smoking, you, it st things start getting clouded. And you can see clear. And you start uh, uh, believing that it is okay. Uh, that, that it is okay to do what I'm doing. That it is okay uh, for me to keep sinning. That it is okay. And you damage in your heart. And we have to have a, a, ch a check. And then you become stressed. And when you stress, you start, your heart becomes broken. And you start doing un unnecessary damage to your heart. And... You start thinking that you don't you don't need anyone in your life that you can do all things by yourself and then you start taking weight that don't belong to you you start uh, taking ways that is somebody else's weight that and then you walk around uh, with anxiety you walk around uh, feeling tired you walk around uh, feeling depressed and you don't even know why and it's because you're taking on other people's uh, weight other people's stress and you don't realize that you're doing damage to yourself. And each one of, of these things can uh, be destructive. It's a destructive force that it becomes a disease in your life. And we have to check our heart. Uh, check your heart physically and check your heart spiritually. And Ezekiel 36, 26 says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone for, you, for your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I don't know if you understood me, but I like practically. <laughs> and I'm sorry because I, I did this note today and I'm trying to like um, go over this uh, that you can understand it. And and I want to touch about how, how to have a heart conformed to God, how to have a heart that is pure in God's eye, that a heart that is conformed to God's heart. Everyone think that oh, you have to be a supernatural, or spiritual person and to develop a heart conformed to God, but it is easier than what we think, and we need to develop those things in our heart. The quality, those qualities that God already spoken in our life, those qualities that God had uh, uh, um, has spoken in our life way before our creation, way before we were born. Those things, those qualities were already spoken into us and we have to be uh, the first thing we have to do we have to be humble uh, and, and your success and your success you, uh, great it's amazing you successful uh, thank God for that and uh, but in that success give glory to God and that success praise God and you know Saul was jealous uh, of David because he not only killed Goliath, and you know, you know all the story, everybody know that story, but he also had uh, more success in battle than what Saul did. And, and you see in uh, 1, Samuel 18, 1 Samuel 18, 7, where everybody was praising uh, David. Uh, they were dancing in the street, and, you know, uh, Saul got a little bit uh, uncomfortable and a little bit jealous because, you know, he, he, he killed more people than, than Saul did. And, but David, throughout all his success, he still have a heart for God. He still had a heart that worshiped God, that gave glory to God, that, that it was a, a humble heart. Um, I like what President Truman said. Um, I was looking for some information, and he said he was, he, that he was there by accident and tried to remember where he came from. And where he's going, uh, where he's going back to, uh, and I'm not going to, uh, I, I'm here, I, I don't want to talk about politics, but I, I want you to understand something. Be careful. Uh, our president is not God. And he, he's a vassal that God, he's a vessel that God put there for the time being. But when you start praising the man, when you start giving glory to a man that is just there because God allowed him to be there. And any minute, God can take him out. And we start giving him uh, props and we start giving him 
all this thing that glorify him. We have to be careful with that. And I, I'm not going to get into it. I, I'm just going to leave it there. But you catch my drift. All the glory belongs to God. Everything that we do, it belongs to God. Whatever step we make is because God allowed. Everything that is happening is because God allowing it. Uh, be mindful of, of people. Be mindful of everything that you're doing. And sometimes you, you, we do things and we forget that God is, God has count our step. God has count our days. God has count uh, the things. Oh, he knows all the things. He knows our beginning from our end. And we, we're not walking in God, if we're not walking with a heart conformed to God, if we're not doing the things that God has called us to do, then we're missing. We're, we're missing something. What are we doing? Are we checking our heart? And uh, sometimes we feel that like we're doing all this thing and everything that we say and anything that we do, um, you know, hey, we're doing it to glorify God. Are you really glorifying God? Are you really worshiping God in everything that you're doing? Because we get too comfortable doing the things of life, and we get too comfortable on, uh, on all the things there is around us, on all work, school, and everything that we have to do in our life. But are we uh, worshiping God in everything that we're doing? And you're trying to say, Angel, you're trying to spiritualize everything. Oh, wait, well, yeah. Whatever you say, whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever you decree out of your mouth, you know, is going to happen here on earth like it's going to happen in heaven because it, there's a connection between us and the spiritual realm. And people don't like to speak about this and people get all finicky and scared about talking about the spiritual realm. But if other people that own uh, believe in God, that do all the things beside the things of God, believe more in those things that we do, then why is it that if we have a mighty God, a powerful God, a, a, a God that has control over everything, if we believe in that God that is most powerful, the King of King and Lord of Lord, why we uh, abandon the spiritual for say, or we just like, oh, we're not touching that. And we're not touching that subject. That's for weird people. You know, call me weird. I don't care, but hmm. I'm, I'm, I, we have to be available for God. We have to be servants of God. And God call us to be ready at all time. When he call us, are you going to be ready? Are you going to answer? Are, are you going to report for duty? Are you reporting for duty every morning? When I, when God ordered you, uh, give your order, and that morning when you wake up and get on your knees and pray, and God give your order, hey, I need you to do this today. Are you going to go and do it? Or are we just going to sit around and be lazy? We have to be ready to roll. We have to be ready to move. We have to be ready at moment notice to be ready and say, here I am, Lord. What you want me to do? Here I am. Where you want me to go? Here I am. Who you want me to talk to? Here I am. Who you want me to uh, minister to? And and like I said, we got this avenue. Thank you, Jesus, for Facebook and the internet. But don't rely on just this because there's people out there that don't have time to get in here. They don't have time to uh, um, see us on, on camera. But can we touch their life? Because right now, it seems like... Uh, like the 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 restrictions has uh, lifted because everybody's in the street, so I think we had the opportunity to do something big. We had the opportunity to go minister to people, to talk to people. Are you available when he needs you? Are you available when he asks for you? Uh, or, or you're gonna say, "Here I am, Lord, send me." David was ready. David, he was ready, and in the moments notice when. Less suspected, he was there. He was ready to go. How about you? Are you ready? Uh, throughout all these battles of life, throughout all these distractions, throughout everything that is going on, are you ready to stand in the gap for, for the Lord? Are you ready to stand in the love and the gap for people? Because people right now, people right now in the street need us to get up in the spirit and start uh, sitting, uh, um, cover those gaps. There are they have that they have left behind that they have left because they're getting distracted. Uh, are we gonna fill those gaps? Are we gonna stand up in the gap for the Lord and say, Here I am, Lord, send me? And we have to look at our heart. 
Are we paying more attention to what's going on out there, to what God is saying? Because everything, something can sound really good. And, and, and right now, I, I just went away from my notes because I feel this in the spirit. There's people out there that they got distracted. There's people out there right now that they, they, they abandon the things from the Lord because they see what's going on. They see everything that's going on and they think, uh, where's God? Where's God when I need him? I, I pray to God and I can hear him. I, what is your distraction? What is in your heart? What, is, uh, what are you looking at that is making you see God differently? Because we can get distracted and we can get uh, turned into a different direction and then just in one little click. Uh, I clicked something that I shouldn't have seen or I did something that I should have done and I went and saw something that I should have looked at or or I'm paying attention to too much social media or I'm watching uh, things that I shouldn't be watching or I'm just so distracted with the things that are going on in life that I'm forgetting that God is there waiting for you to get on your knee, waiting for you to open your mouth and speak to him so he can talk to you because he's constantly talking. He's constantly there. He's constantly ministering to us. He sent the Holy Spirit for us to have a perfect communication with him. And sometimes we just take our eyes away from everything that God is trying to do. Where are you standing with God? Where is your heart? How you talk to him today? And, uh, I, I, I've been thinking, uh, last night I was praying, and I was like, God, I don't have nothing to bring. I, 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 I don't know what to say. And sometimes you get in those moments that you're, trying to, uh, you're just trying to think about things that, that is going on. You're trying to uh, get your thoughts together to see what God is saying. And it, it comes to the moment where, in that silence, in that moment, I heard God talk about the heart. Because there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people that they have abandoned me, they have uh, walked away from me, that their heart have become uh, so damaged and so um, hardened. And when you let your heart get hardened, when you let your heart uh, become like a rock, uh, it's become hard to, to for God to penetrate your heart. It, it, he can do it no matter what, but it become harder for you to come out of that, for say. It become harder for you to allow God to minister to your life, uh, allow God to touch uh, your heart. And we have to be open to God. We have to be open more than ever. And this time, I think this is a critical time, not only for the church, but for the people out there. This is a critical time for the people to come to God. And we have abandoned uh, our beliefs. We have abandoned um, our freedom. We have abandoned <coughs> the things that God has spoken, not only for this nation, but for for our lives. And, you know, you're, you're predestined to do, do things in the Lord. You're predestined to uh, seek God, to seek, give God your heart. And when uh, you lose uh, the eye, the, 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 the path that God has for you, that's when your heart um, becomes damaged. And uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, that your heart becomes softened, that that you be restored, that you uh, your life become purified, and that you can uh, uh, start walking in God's presence, that you can start uh, depending more on God than depending on the man, depending more on God than depending on on the thing of this world. Because at the end of the day, the day we 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 God call us, everything here it will stay. Uh, Everything that you see around here, it's just going to stay here. And I'm okay with that as long that when I'm standing next to God, he said, well done, my son. Uh, and that's all that matters to me. And that's all that should matters to you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God touch your heart, that God restore your heart. And whatever pain that you have gone through, that whatever struggle that you have gone through, that God can heal you, that God can restore you, that God can... Uh, Touch, grab your heart and purify you and just make it new and give you a new heart and give you that passion for him. And that's all I wanted to share. That's all I wanted to give you. Um, very short, 
and I hope that you have been blessed. I hope that you take this moment and take this word to reflect on it and allow God to minister to you, allow God to uh, touch your heart. Anybody, you got something? No? So, God bless you. God bless you, uh, Donna. God bless you. Uh, bless you, everybody that's here. Melissa. I uh, can't see anybody else. Um, you want to you wanna talk? <laughs> From there? <laughs> I need to see it. I'll give you one more scripture real quick. Let me find it. God bless you too, Daria. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, Dara, Donna, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> um, one more verse real quick. She's going to find it for me. Listen, we've got to take the moment to um, reflect on this word. We've got to take the moment to... to we matter to God. Um, there's this saying that said... Um, Just read the whole thing. Verse and verse one. From seven to what? Seven to what? This one. All right, I'm going to read this real quick. It says, uh, Jeremiah 17, uh, 7 to 10. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green. This is powerful. And they never stop producing fruit. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. And this, that's just why I need my glass. And despairly wicked, wicked. Who really know how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motive. I give all people their due rewards. According to what the action deserve. Um, this is amazing scripture. Uh, uh, this is very powerful, and you know, we have to stay in the word. We have to stay planted in the word. We have to, uh, you know, the the word is like living water. Uh, the word. It's living water, and it penetrates in us, and it keeps us green, it keeps us alive, it keeps us breathing. And you know, when a plant, when a plant is planted, uh, we know that getting all the nutrients from the dirt and getting all the nutrients, the water from the dirt, and when it rains, all that nutrient comes up and keep the the tree green. It, it, the same with the word of God. The word of God is so important that we stay in the word, that we stay. He's the vine and we are the branch. Um, and we have to stay, you know, in the word. We have to stay uh, because he seek our heart. He, he, he's looking at our heart. He's he looking at our motive. He's looking at everything that we're doing and we do. And um, I believe that it is the time for us to stay in the word of God. Um, there's a lot of distraction going on, but um, stay in the word. Uh, that's all I, I wanted to share. That's all I wanted to uh, uh, give you for today. I hope that you have been blessed, that you have been encouraged, and this is all I have. Uh, God bless you, and 
Uh, have a good night. A anybody needs prayer? Anybody needs needs prayer? Anybody got any questions? Um, now is the time. Amen. Thank you, Donna. Amen. Glory to God. All right, quick prayer. Um, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you um, that there's people here that are hungry for your word, that are seeking you, Lord, that want more of you, Lord Father. And right now, I pray that you minister to their life, Lord Father. You know our heart. You know our need. You know our struggle. You know our daily, uh, our daily life. You know what's coming tomorrow, Lord Father. And whatever it is, Lord Father, let it be in your will. Let it be your will, Lord, Father, in our life. Let us walk with you every day. Let us have a, a more intimate uh, um, relationship with you. There, there are heart uh, long for you every day and night. And every time, uh, every thought that be surround on you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in our life. I thank you uh, for the opportunity to come here and speak your word and to uh, minister to people's life. And I hope and pray that everyone that is watching, everyone that click on this video, that they can be uh, encouraged and receive healing in their heart and have a check, uh, have a spiritual check in their lives, Lord Father. I thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Father, I pray for ISIS uh, for stress reduction because the things of life, school, uh, work, uh, decision making, Lord Father, I pray that you guide her. I pray that you give her direction for every decision that she has to make, Lord Father. I, I, I pray that, that that stress be lifted out of her, Lord Father, that she can function in, in your gift, Lord Father, and everything that you have given her uh, in her life, that everything that you have spoken in her life, Father, that she can uh, move in that atmosphere, that she can move in what you have called her, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, all stress is lifted in the name of Jesus. I thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. Uh, have a good night, and we'll be here Sunday. We'll be here. <laughs> amen. I'll, play, I'll pray for Salea, Lord Father. I pray that you bring her closer to you, Lord Father, that you guide her, that you, uh, Father, um, Give her revelation that you, every time she open her, her Bible, that Lord Father, that she can find new things in you, Lord Father, that she can, uh, as she move to the years of, of a teenager, Lord, a teenager, Lord Father, that you can give her the strength, that you can give her the capacity, Lord Father, to be uh, a, a young woman of God, that you give her inspiration and revelation, not only in her gifting, Lord Father, but in everything that she does in life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, everybody. Have a good night.